and welcome back to my channel it's Hasper here just so you know this is a two-part series video if you have not seen part one be sure to go do that really quick I have linked it in the video description below and after you watch part one then come on over and let's take a look at part two so in part one I stripped five layers of paint on a contour table and now I'm going to take that same table and put it together in my entryway so come along and let's see how all of this comes together last week's video uh, we made over this green table by stripping the five layers of paint that had been sitting on it for the last five years and here it is after being stripped it was conditioned stained and then sealed for durability after all of that was done then came the fun part which was now working on the wall inside for the entry i chose a color called dragonfly and this is also a color by bear i guess i really like bear because all my paints are usually bare uh, but i do like bear because of the one coat coverage that you are able to achieve in most cases so i freehanded the edges here um, I don't know why maybe I was just showing off um, if you know I have a small interior design business and I always watch my contractors freehand their paint jobs so I figured hey why not let me do it as well but tell you what guys don't try to do this uh, get you some painters tape and uh, save yourself the stress and the anxiety that's gonna come from freehanding this because having to make these lines straight is really not it's not easy because any little mishap it could slip into the other wall and then you have to get it off and it's just a whole lot of trouble so save yourself the trouble don't try to show off like i did and uh, get some painters tip although not to toot my own horn i did pretty good i did not get paint in, on any of the neighboring walls and the whole time i was doing this uh baby pressions at the bottom of the ladder and I'm telling him not to climb up and it's really funny because the whole time he's trying to climb up here uh, but yeah so I chose to do just this one wall for now because this is the wall you see when you enter the house well the, the wall that's directly in front of you immediately once you open the front door so after I did all the edges with my two inch cutting brush I then used a roller and I'm using a microfiber roller I've always used microfibers once I learned that they were better for coverage as well as application and they really are. Um, I've had this same foam roller, I kid you not, for I think almost a year. All you have to do is wash it out really good with soap and water and it's always back to life the following use. So make sure you get good tools because the good tools make the job easy and it makes the job professional. All right, so here we are just finishing up this whole wall and no longer need the ladder. Um, I think, I'm not sure how high our ceilings are, but here's the wall after it's all done. I mean, this makes that beautiful crown molding at the top pop and I'm really pleased with this color. So after that, we had to go shopping. Here's my personal shopper eating his fruit snacks, just chilling. Man, I want his life. Look, he's about to blow you a kiss. Ah, kiss, kiss. All right, so anyway, we went shopping to the, the at-home store and I was looking for a round mirror to go above the console table and they had lots of selections and I did find one. So the next day was a beautiful Saturday morning and I wanted to uh, make over some of these candle stands that I've had for a while. They were in storage, so they were a bit dusty and all I'm doing now is washing them down with soap and water, get all of the dust off. They were very dusty and the thing with them is that they had so many little details, uh, all the ironwork, so it was really challenging to get inside. So this took a while, at least for 30 minutes, I was cleaning these candle stands. Uh, Mr. Preston Avery over there is washing his cars in the water that I'm supposed to use to clean this candle stand. But yeah, you know, whatever it takes to keep him busy and having a good time. After that, I had to send him inside so that I can spray them down. I used the paint, uh, I think it's Krylon, I'm not sure. I think it's Krylon from Hobby Lobby. 
it is a gold spray paint but it's not too gold because I didn't want it to be too shiny I just wanted it to have a little bit of a touch of gold and I think it achieved that purpose so here they are you can still see some of the bronze through but you see the gold and that's what I was going for I didn't want a factory finish I wanted it to look rustic and vintage and uh, after that I went through my workshop and I was finding some random miscellaneous jars and what I wanted to do was create a grouping of succulents. I was at Hobby Lobby and I saw they had some and I wanted to get theirs but for all three I would have had to spend at least about $40 and so I decided since I have a plethora of succulents in my collection why not make my own so here are the jars after I sprayed them down I got that mirror from Hobby Lobby and I used the 40% of coupon and so after they were done all I did was go through my stash of florals and I found some succulents that I liked and I used the floral foam, hot glue and some of that, uh, that moss that goes inside and that was, that was it, it was really quick and easy and you know look for ways that you can be creative so that you can save money and I saved $40 by doing this and in return I got to use some of the items that were lying around in my garage that's always good keep those things from the landfill repurpose reuse recycle DIY <laughs> anyway so here is the wall again it is now time for the fun part I am now going to let you listen to some music and enjoy the rest of the video. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Friend, I hope you enjoyed watching this transformation. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time, please consider joining our YouTube family by clicking that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell notification so that YouTube notifies you every time I upload a video. All right, uh, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, please be sure to let me know what you thought in the comments below. Until next time, take care.